Hello, everyone. Well, welcome, welcome to the presentation. So I'm, I'm Andre from, from Germany, actually, and uh, from Switzerland a bit. I'll explain that in a second. So um, I'm going to present uh, something about the demo scene. So who of you here in the room has not heard about the demo scene? OK, good. So oh, one guy. OK. So hopefully not uh, stating the obvious then here. But I'm, I'm very happy that I can uh, introduce what's going on in this vibrant digital subculture uh, in the past couple of years and what has been going on and achieved in a particular effort of the community in the past years. So I'm representing uh, the Swiss Demo Scene Association called Echtzeit, which means real time. It's a, uh, a small community uh, in Switzerland, also rebooting uh, the demo party culture in Switzerland. And I will also come to that. I'm, uh, I'm in the demo scene since 2015 uh, only, so I'm, I'm really sad that I didn't join in the early days. Nevertheless, when I first joined one of the demo parties, I got hooked right away and have not left ever since. I'm not one of the coders, but I'm trying to make myself useful with demo scene outreach and presenting the community wherever I can. Also uh, cross-leveraging uh, different types of conferences. So we are due to present demo scene at the cybersecurity conference in November. So we are doing some kind of cross-pollination there. So um, I am um, I'm part of, of this uh, Echtzeit uh, community. It's, uh, it's a small, small non-profit association in, in Switzerland. They have run uh, demo parties already in the 90s, and then it uh, kind of uh, went silent for a bit. But now we have a team up again and running demo parties in Switzerland. And the next one is coming up uh, actually in February next year. So dates are on there. It's 16th to 18th of February. So if you're uh, interested in coming to the heart of Europe and coming to Switzerland, then please, please come and join us there. So um, demo scene is, uh, is about demonstrating, but in the most positive way that you can imagine. It's about demonstrating your own skills and the capabilities of a certain machine that you pick. So the demo scene is producing the artifacts called demos, which are real-time rendered audiovisual productions running on real hardware. And it can be basically anything that you can program to execute a demo. Popular platforms are obviously C64, Amiga, Atari, PC, and everything that is kind of common hardware. But you can also do stuff on very well, well obscure things. You might even want to run uh, a demo on a floppy 1541 uh, with the graphics output coming from the floppy. So stuff like that. So you can do anything, and it's rooted in the home computer revolution of the 80s. And it comes from the, the cracker and very scene. So people put in front of the cracked software little intros saying, well, we were the first to crack the software, and we are celebrating ourselves, and you should too. And this completely transitioned into a digital arts culture where people just created these demos because they like to do it. And uh, this is a very, very strong attachment to this community because people love what they do, and they love the community. So um, I already said we can run it on, on any platform. Amiga is a big, 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 big thing already, and, and still in the, in the demo scene. It has been one of the key platforms of the scene for, for ages, and we will look into a couple of demos later on. Uh, there is um, a huge documentation of all that uh, in, in the repositories that are online. And people usually get together to release a demo at a so-called demo party. Who, is, who of you has been to a demo party? Oh, there's two people in the room. OK. That's a little bit different than, than this year. Uh, it it's really feels like a combination of a hackathon, a LAN party, and a real party. So uh, I've brought you some pictures there. It's people getting together, usually in a dark room, because you uh, air the demos on a big screen there. And they crunch uh, their demos, program their demos, usually till the last minute of the deadline. So there is a deadline in to which you have to submit something. And then it will be shown to the whole, uh, aired to the whole community later on. And people can vote. So it's a competition thing. So people compete uh, friendly among one another. And this is also uh, what makes the community tick to some degree. So this is uh, Evoke Demo Party in Cologne in 2014. Um, Next slide is uh, uh, Helsinki Assembly Demo Party, big, big uh, demo party community in, in, uh, in the Nordics in, in Europe. And um, 
at uh, Revision, which is the largest demo scene event, which is happening always over Easter uh, in, in Germany, in Saarbrücken. Uh, around about 1,000 people are on site. So it's, it's, it's major. And uh, you see this, this is a really big hall. Uh, it's an old electricity power plant. Uh, you have a really big screen and uh, like a um, club discotheque style audio system and people uh, work there and then uh, they, they have a, a schedule to which they air all the productions that have been handed in a certain, certain category. And it's vast. So um, this is a selection of, uh, of the Revision 2023 comp compost competitions in which you could enter your works. So meaning we have small size things like 256 byte intros, 3D graphics, but also a whole lot of Amiga stuff. Intro is small size uh, code. Demos can be basically without limitations in the size. And uh, you have also um, other old school type of platforms like anything that you want in the 8-bit world. And uh, obviously also open class, open-ended new age hardware PC with everything top-notch stuff. And uh, sometimes you limit yourself in sizes like 4K or 8K or 64K or uh, the open class demos where you have basically no limitations at all on, on the size of the, of the code. It has been um, added to a bit like uh, making it more accessible to people who cannot code. So usually a, um, a demo is, is a collaboration of people, people creating graphics, creating the code, creating music, and, and all the, the orchestration. Uh, but uh, to make it more approachable for, for anyone, you, uh, we have already ab uh, added stuff like photo competitions, where you have a certain motto and, and hand in a photo, or just uh, graphics or just music, so that uh, anyone can, can, has a chance to contribute. And uh, yeah, so this has been... Um, wildly successful over the years. We have um, strong documentation platforms. We have a platform called DemoZoo, where everything is recorded. Uh, all the video recordings of the demos are available. The code, the executables are available. Um, the demo groups are uh, registered. The demos are registered. The parties are registered. And all the results are registered. So if you want to look up certain artifacts of the scene, you have a great place to go and find out about anything and everything and uh, also the links to the Slack channels, Discord communities, and so on, if you want to get uh, involved directly. So um, we have done a little study uh, why this is uh, digital culture. What do people do? Why are they attached to this community? Uh, uh, most interestingly, or, or maybe not interestingly, it's, uh, it's not about just the technology. It's about the people and the community spirit. So most of these people have some kind of alienation feeling with the world and want to uh, deal with that with artistic expression. So that's what, they, what the, brings them to the scene. And they are motivated to create something aesthetically relevant or with digital means. And um, they, they come to it and maybe sometimes start as a, as a solo project, but then usually get absorbed by the community and get together in groups to create these, these pieces. And it's meeting like-minded others uh, and create stuff that counts to you and the people in, in unison what makes them what makes them and and band together and uh, if people get new to this community uh, it's either uh, they uh, they think oh wait well, I don't understand any of this but those people who get it they for them it's re usually like a revelation they think why have I not found about this before I wanted to be there forever because these these people are like me and uh, we have the same the same uh, ideas and the same pains and so they meet frequently at demo parties. So these are not people working alone in their basement. They strive for meeting uh, their community. They strive for meeting their family uh, again at these demo parties. That's the reason why we have so many. So if you look at, uh, at the demoparty.net, you will find uh, there are so many demo parties all over the world, uh, mostly in Europe, so, uh, sadly, um, that uh, uh, it's, it's really uh, good to, to get connected right away. So I'm particularly here in, in the States also, and I'm really happy that I can be here at this event, to spread the world about the demo scene more in, in the States, uh, because I think uh, there's obviously tremendous potential uh, from, from, uh, from the States where the computing technology that those people also love so much is coming from, and uh, there's only a small community of demo parties and demo scene, uh, scene events in, in the States, so I would very much like to change that and maybe this can be um, like a nucleus for getting this done. I had an um, in interesting interaction last week in the Computer History Museum with the, with the President Daniel Lewin. He's also very much interested in doing stuff with the demo scene, so maybe we have a good chance here. Um, well, uh, having all that said, uh, 
uh, I outlined a bit why people come to the scene and stay, stick to it. It's a, a really digital culture happening. It's about the people and the community, not just technology, even though technology plays an important role uh, in, the, in, this, um, in this whole community. So I um, alluded to with the title of the presentation already uh, a bit, why is this important to us and why does it count and what are we doing with this now? So um, we have been with the community on a multiple year effort to get the demo scene recognized by UNESCO as intangible cultural heritage of mankind as the first digital culture ever. And this is the reason why uh, these two guys here on the slides have initiated a project called The Art of Coding, which banded together the community and uh, drove this UNESCO application process country by country. So this is usually a country uh, effort, which means the procedures are a little bit different from country to country. So you have to find a local community writing an application to get uh, the attention of UNESCO. And this is what happened. And it was... Um, Wildly successful so far, we have managed to get five countries recognized as intangible cultural heritage by UNESCO. Finland was first, big demo scene uh, in Finland. Germany was next, then Poland, and just recently the Netherlands and Switzerland. So this is major. So this is something that was uh, uh, hoped for, but not really expected in this path and in this, in this uh, speed. So. What's next is uh, we obviously continue writing uh, national applications. However, the idea is to have a multinational application, meaning to get uh, on the UNESCO world list of intangible cultural heritages. So this would be a, a, a tremendous success. And uh, even now we have a big success because this is the first digital culture ever which has entered um, the, the intangible cultural heritage recognition of UNESCO. So, um, yeah. Having all that said, I think we can take a look uh, at uh, the demo. I've uh, brought a couple of examples here in the slides. The slides will be published, so you can look it up later. Um, before I go through the slides, let's just look at a demo, right? So I will switch the screen and we can look at one of the recent productions. So I will just do a reboot in this machine. Thanks for Doug for lending me the A600 with OCS uh, and HDMI output. I have deliberately picked uh, only demos which are uh, original chipset or enhanced chipset. So this would run on any stock Amiga 500. And I'll shut up for a minute.
Well, let's um, maybe um, wrap up the presentation and then we can, can watch a couple more. Um, yeah, so we'll watch this one actually next. So uh, this was kind of an, um, a recent demo. Uh, that was this one that we've uh, just uh, saw, uh, saw here. It was released as a mail swapping release, like a traditional uh, old school thing. It was not released at a party. Uh, it was released in December 2020 in the middle of COVID to keep everyone cheering up, uh, still uh, uh, locked in lockdowns. So uh, it was um, it was um, uh, distributed then online afterwards. And uh, this is something that's important to note. Maybe turn it off for a bit. Can you can you turn down the audio from the machine? There's, well, the, the, the audio from the Amiga was running. Can you, can you turn it down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry. Um, it was turned on, so off now, off now. Okay, so um, there, you see in the footnote, there is a, a reference to the Meteorix Award, which is like the demo scene Oscars. So it's like, uh, like um, a comedy gets together every year and at the past year's productions in a different uh, category set and says, okay, these are the ones that, uh, that we consider worth, worthy in a certain category to receive this Meteorix Award. And uh, at a certain uh, event, then it's basically published which, which, uh, which one won. And uh, the Meteorix is something that has been um, coming up in the past couple of years. And it's now uh, an institution of the demo scene. So um, we have done the laureate uh, procedure at the Mountain Bites demo party in Switzerland this, this year and hopefully we'll be able to do the same again uh, next year in Switzerland. So all this information are on this DemoZoo website. So if you, if you look at DemoZoo you will find all the details and you will find uh, the, image, uh, the, the um, disk images of the, of the demos and you will find executables and sometimes also reference to GitHub where they explain how they did it. All right, um, I have um, a couple listed in here. This is, uh, let me get back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah very, very famous. Um, this is, this is a, um, an intro that was very popular and also had a Meteorix Award. This Eon by the Black Lotus, I couldn't get around with the GoTech, unfortunately, but it's also a Meteorix uh, Award demo. And then obviously the old school stuff like State of the Art by Spaceballs, it's all, I mean, it's, 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 it's very cool. And uh, that was, it is from 92, right? So this is an old thing, but it's legendary. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, and that's, you probably also know, a mega demo from Tristar Um Sector. Yeah, that's uh, about the Amiga demos. Uh, what we also do is uh, like outreach events uh, and uh, publications. Let's get back, it was too fast clicking. It's a lag a bit, yes. So we, do publications about the demo scene. So this is an, an excerpt from a German retro computing magazine where we usually present demo scene stuff. And uh, this was the special issue of the return magazine for the Amiga 500 Mini when it came out. So we got together with a couple of, of people from the scene and wrote up little mini reviews about demos and it was uh, in that magazine. Same as uh, coming up for the C64 this year. And there's also a demo article in, in this. It's German, but uh, well, we, we try to publish and, and distribute information about the scene wherever we can. Um, wrapping this up, obviously, uh, there's all the other platforms as well. Very uh, many C64 productions, very impressive uh, um, size coding things like 256 byte. Uh, demos in, in the uh, PC world, so there's a whole separate demo party about only size coding, which is very, very popular. So this is a thing that uh, worth checking out. And um, yeah, so it's, it's a vast universe, so everyone who, who is uh, interested should definitely look it up and join. And uh, I highly encourage you to go to a demo party if you ever have the chance. Uh, if, you, if you go to a revision, it's like a real blast, but it's really cool to be there. But there's also smaller events which are not so uh, overwhelming, maybe. All right, so that's it. Uh, there's lots of 4K stuff in, in the PC world as well. And uh, yeah, everything's on, online available. This 
this is, these are my home bases uh, of, of where I work off. So Echtzeit I mentioned, I'm also part of the Berlin Demo Scene Association Computer Kunst, which is computing arts. A digital retro park is a museum in, uh, close to Frankfurt in Offenbach, and the Art of Coding is the project uh, to bring the uh, demo scene on the UNESCO list. All right. I'm, I'm done with talking. If there are any questions, let me know, and then we can watch a couple of more demos. Yeah, that's a, that, the, the, the question. The question was, why is UNESCO important? So um, the the demo scene is is a is a, like an underground, uh, uh, like somewhat anarchic culture, and uh, there is a constant debate: uh, Do we want to have this big recognition because uh, we are fearing it can be too commercial, so we'll be swamped with big tech, whatever? So this is this is like a, a very uh, fine line that we have to walk to to preserve uh, the culture as it is without being compromised by too much money. However, um, these events are usually starving money-wise, funding-wise. So it's usually um, a major community effort putting at risk uh, the livelihoods of the people who do it. So it, it would be good to have a moderate capability of attaining uh, funding for getting uh, the events uh, run. Uh, doing the preservation uh, activities, doing hardware preservation, doing everything that's related to preserving the culture uh, without that it's a, a stretch on the community only. So the hope is that with the UNESCO recognition we will get the, uh, um, the potential for acquiring more public funding in, in Europe and all over the world. So this has not happened so far, so this is only community work and uh, so that's the reason why people said, well, we are a digital culture why not try to aim for the UNESCO recognition so that we are uh, more sustainably funded and more su sustainably set up for the future? I hope that answers the question. You have more questions. Uh, yeah. So if you're a person who is not a coder and maybe not written contributing to the scene, what experience with that person involves or whatever experience assembly or vision, what is that like for those people? Are they welcome in that environment? Yeah, the, the question is, uh, if you're not a coder, what can you do to experience the scene and how does it feel for you? So, um, the scene is, is very open. So, an, anyone and everyone who's interested to experience the community and see, the, see the, the works of the community are very welcome. It's a very welcoming um, um, community and it's very rewarding to be there. Uh, I think for, for some people who have no idea what's, what's happening, and looking at this, it can be uh, not so connecting. So if you don't really appreciate that this is coming from a 35 plus year old machine, what you're seeing there, and uh, it's, it's something that is very, very particular. Uh, and uh, obviously it can be done in modern hardware 10 times better or 100 times better, but you have to be appreciative of, of what's going on at, at least a bit. So that's for, for complete outsiders, I think, the biggest hurdle. Otherwise, it's, it's like a party. It's a, it's a community thing. You can talk to people. You can approach everyone. They will be very open to welcome, welcoming you. And they will, um, they will obviously try to get you into the scene. Because we, we, are, we are very, very looking forward to getting new people in. It's, it's like, like here, we are all older people now are getting older so we have we have like a succession problem so we need fresh blood into the sea that's why we need to re reinvent uh, uh, the community also with new with, with new competitions so that it's more attractive for for people getting into the scene but it's very welcoming it's very rewarding and if you if you want to join it's it's easy to do and there is these um, these different categories that I mentioned where you can contribute even if you're not a coder and you don't have to contribute. If you just go and enjoy the show and enjoy the party and connect with people, you're fine to do that. You mentioned uh, Git and source coding. Is, is it an option or is it expected? And if it's expected, is it, should it be completely available? Do people hold back some of their secret source? Well, what's, the, what's the expectation around? So the, the, the question is, is, is everything open source? Is it published? Can you know what's, what's going on? Or is it secret source that people put in? So I, I'd say it's, it depends completely on your own preference. 
Um, it was like a secret saucy in the, in the beginning and in the early days more, but it's completely opening up. So you can find tons of things uh, in, on GitHub for particularly the size coding guys. They are insane. They have a size coding wiki where everything is documented. You can see all the, the code sequences, how they, how they do it. They are very, very welcoming and helping, helping you get on board, getting up to speed. So it, it has opened quite a lot. Uh, at the, at the uh, demo parties, there's usually a seminar track where people present their tool chain. So they show you how they code on a modern platform and completely port it over, or they have uh, created their own demo production tools that they completely have as open source available there. The cables is a good example. This is a thing that was created by a bunch of people running their small company and uh, having a complete open source tool set for creating top-notch uh, uh, PC animations that are commercially used. So it's, it's very open. Um, I think um, if you don't want to publish, it's your it's your your choice, but it has opened quite a lot, so people are publishing. Most engineers appreciate the visual and the audio part. I'm, I'm curious from a community perspective: are the clicks how people find those different kind of skills and form for particular projects? Is it dynamic? Is there a marketplace? What, what, how does that yeah. happen? So the question is, is, is if not one person can do everything, so it, you can either do code or music or graphics, or how do you find people to, to connect to do the production? So, um, like a demo party is usually also like a marketplace for talent, right? Yeah. So um, it's it's um, these things that we've just watched or that, that they're out there. These are usually team productions. Some of them many man months or many years sometimes even put on work in. It's a big team effort, and it's it's all on the side. Like this is not completely non-commercial. Usually people are from the industry. They are from the gaming industry, from the media industry, whatever in music. So they they know one another, and uh, you can. You can demonstrate what you can do and you can pitch for a group or you just get together and say, oh, well, why don't we do a demo together? Let's form a group. So it's completely dynamic. It's non-regulated at all. So that's the reason why it's called uh, anar an anarchic culture almost because there is no leader. An anarchy just means without leader, right? So that's the, that's the thing that it's completely fluid and completely dynamic. Ron. Say it again. What percentage are team? You talked about a lot of our team efforts. Uh -huh. How yeah. much are team efforts and how much are individual efforts? I'd say, I'd say the demo productions are usually team efforts. So if, if you if you uh, if you just the graphics expert, you hand in stuff as as, as individual in, in 3D competition. If you're a musician, you can enter the, these combos. But the, the bigger productions are usually team efforts. So and these these smaller productions can also be one man things. So 256 bytes is not like a project for a team, but it's it's a it's a, uh, an interesting thing to do. But the the bigger productions are usually teams uh, creating it together and they usually have the complete credits uh, in the in the demo somewhere or in the on the demo zoom page you see uh, who has contributed which part and you know what's going on it's 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 mostly team effort sorry sure so, uh, i'd like to stand on the shoulders of others and i'm just curious um, is there uh, in the community, I, I, I would probably want to leverage uh, like the soundtrack of the team or, and so on. I, I'm, I'm assuming that's accepted and supported and something people cite when they, when they build a demo. Yeah, if you if you want to reuse stuff, you can um, obviously always ask, right? So the community is uh, is very sensitive about using material that others created. So you can you can do this and and say, well, I'm doing a remake of this. Uh, of this demo uh, on another platform and you quote and, and say, okay, obviously this is a remake. Uh, if you just steal stuff, I think you're, this will not be appreciated, but uh, everyone is really approachable. You usually know who did it and you can talk to him and tell him, look, if we want to do something together, can, can, we do, can, we do, uh, can you do a soundtrack for the, the demo? And usually there is some kind of conversation around it and you will figure it out. Pirates are very sensitive about piracy. They are not. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so this, this next point. So, uh, are pirates sensitive about piracy? So, obviously, it's it's like an ethical uh, thing. Uh, all, also, in the in the early days. So, the various various times are over. So, but people who were.
competitive in the sense that it obviously was a challenge to be the first one to crack a certain software. So you want to be famed for that. And this competitive spirit, I think, has transitioned into the community. So that it still works so well because people are in a friendly competition and want to be recognized and also want to recognize each other's work. So that's the reason uh, this was in this community study as well. So people want to be uh, recognized as someone who contributes and at the same time they are very, very appreciative of contributions of others. So that's, that's I think, exactly the, the, the point where it comes together. Any more questions? When I go to Europe in 2025, would I look at demoparty.net to find a list of demo parties at the time when I go to Europe? Yes. So the question was, if uh, if you go next year or 2025 to a demo to to Europe and want to go to a demo party, where should you look? Uh, uh, what's happening? So demoparty.net is the, the go-to place. Everything that's happening in the scene is listed there from, a, from an event perspective. You can also look at DemoZoo. Usually there's also a register there, but DemoParty.net is like a full register. You can fill it by country, you can fill it by month, whatever. So um, if you want to find out what's going on in the community, um, look there. Obviously, you can also join uh, one of the Discord channels and just ask people. They will tell you, okay, look, this is happening there, come there, or be uh, helpful also in getting you up to speed when, you're, when you get to the party and uh, uh, take your first steps uh, on, on party ground. Probably more of a round table type discussion to see if this one but it would be interesting to hear or experience a conversation about why the WC is here to be largely Yeah. yeah, so, so the, the, the question or the, the, the uh, idea is what, um, what, uh, what makes this demo scene more successful in, 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 in Europe or why was it more successful in Europe? I only have my speculations. We can pick it, pick it up later if, if you like. One key uh, theme that I think is, uh, is visible is that um, lots of people in Europe got exposed to this in a certain time in their life and uh, this was usually young, young folks and home computers were extremely successful in Europe, particularly C64 and Amiga and um, so I think that was the reason why people also had the possibility to do stuff with machines and I think uh, more and, and some of them only started with gaming, right? So gaming was also a big thing obviously and you, you want to do more but then in, in the US I think mostly electronics uh, getting into the into the reality of many many people in the world came via consoles. So right, it was much more difficult to do stuff actively on a console, right? Because you just couldn't program it. So um, I think the um, the immersion into this community came with computers that you could actually do something with, and many people wanted to do stuff. And I think this is one part why why this. Um, could have uh, gotten more successful in, in Europe because it was just a community thing happening with the capability to program the machines yourself. Yeah, I, I, there's no real studies about this, or maybe I don't know them, but I think this is, this is kind of different strands of technology getting adopted to a certain degree in, in these different regions, and this is why this ended up like this. I think for some cases, the machines have a much longer lifespan in Europe, whereas yeah. I think in North America, several years before people moved on rapidly and perhaps the yeah. early wall maybe, um, the adoption of this technology in Eastern Europe uh, yeah. helped keep that energy momentum going and then kind of the selling 8-bit machines. Yeah, eight, you're right, 8-bit was a thing very, very long in, in Europe uh, overall and it could have. Um, I appreciate totally your idea of having more breakout discussion about this. I'd love to do this. What we are hoping for, for is to have like an unconference about digital culture at some point. So um, I'm, I'm working on that uh, from a conceptual perspective, so hopefully we'll be able to do that at some point. Forget UNESCO, let's make this an Olympic sport. Say again? Forget UNESCO, let's make it an Olympic sport. Olympic sport, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, in, uh, well, if we are uh, looking at AI and metaverse and all that, so probably we do Ol Olympics for demo scene and digital culture, yeah. Lots of caffeine.
More questions. About, uh, about a month ago, there was a, uh, an Amiga party in Long Beach, California. It was not well advertised. How would they advertise on your sites here? Or which sites would you recommend for advertising their party? Yeah, so, so how, in how to advertise community events? So, um, most obviously, the demo party.net is something usually um, for demo parties, right? So, but there is also other community events uh, announced there. So, uh, also more like retro communi uh, community events are published there, uh, which have some kind of friendly liaison with the demo scene. So, if you wanted to publish something there, uh, you could. I'd say demoparty.net. So, if you see, there is a couple of parties on, on demoparty.net, which are not key demo party events. Uh, for example, next week there is an Atari, uh, Atari Jaguar festival with, I don't know, 30, 40 people. And they are very demo scene friendly, so they will also publish their event there. All right. Thank you. Thank you for being here and being interested. Uh, we'll just run a couple of more demos, right?